Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Polaris figure, which is one that I was very excited to see that they were making. I've always been a big fan of Polaris. In fact, she's one of, if not my favorite, Marvel female characters, so it's very nice to finally get a figure of her. And here's the thing, they actually reused almost every single part from other figures, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, we're going to get into it though, some things are really nice on this figure and some things are really terrible. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about six and a half inches tall, which makes her just about 16 to 16 and a half centimeters, depending on where you look for her he head slash hair area and i will take a minute just to talk about scale she's six and a half inches tall which means at scale she's six six i really don't think polaris is supposed to be six six that just goes to show that almost every marvel legends figure is technically out of scale they're too big for 112 scale so other lines that are also too big for 112 scale will fit in very nicely if that's something you're concerned with so don't worry about it too much if something is too big it'll fit in nicely okay so this figure like i said mostly reused parts not usually a good sign, but sometimes they do that in order to cut costs and then they can make things nice. And uh, I don't know if that worked out this time. Let's start talking about the paint. All of the flesh tone is molded plastic, which is always a good idea. You don't have to worry about painting it because painting flesh tones is just terrible. And here's the thing. Almost all of it, I kind of lied. Her torso is molded in green, and then they painted the flesh tone for those side spots. And it's a terrible color, it doesn't match, and it doesn't look good at all. It's not even a good flesh tone. Not only does it not match, but it looks like she's pale and chalky, and it just looks weird. And it really kills the aesthetic of the figure, big time. They should have molded this in flesh tone and just painted the dark green. Dark green is one of the easiest colors to paint, especially over a nice light flesh tone color. So that's a huge party foul totally ruins the aesthetic. I don't like that at all. Another interesting thing about the coloring on this figure is this part is molded green, this part is molded green, this part is painted light green because it was molded dark green. That's not good either. You don't want to paint light over dark and here's why. Well, in this case, green actually worked out because green's a really nice color to paint. I don't know why, it's something about the pigment, uh, but it's not the right shade of green. So we have one color of green down here, one color green here, and one color green here. It's not that terrible to the naked eye, but it is something you'll notice. So it's a little distracting. Again, it hurts the aesthetic of the figure. Lastly, paint-wise, we have the head, which they actually nailed. It's really nice. They painted the eyes and mouth uh, pretty much where it should be. Everything's lined up, and it looks pretty good. Sure, it could be better, but we're talking about a Marvel Legends figure here, and I think this is what we should expect and what we should hope for, because it looks really, really nice. This little crown piece, or whatever this is called, is a separate piece, so there's no paint issues at all there. The hair is also a separate piece, but they did this really nice uh, darker green slash black wash, and that looks great. The hair is fantastic. I like the sculpt, and I like the paint on it. It looks just about perfect. They even put a little bit of metallic green in there for the hairband, so it looks really good. So like I said, there are some things that are good about this figure, and other things that are not. Uh, we do have the cape which has the painted little nubbins on there, and they're painted nicely, and the cape fits well enough. It has to go under her hair, but then it pegs into her back, and it sits in place pretty well. Let's get it up there. Uh, it's not perfect, but her hair kind of hides that. It kind of holds the cape in place, and it looks pretty good. I don't really have too many complaints about that. And we do have these two bubble accessories, which we're going to never stop getting, apparently. Uh, the funny thing is they actually work for Polaris, I think. I think they, uh, they're they a little bit more appropriate for her than some of the other uses, so I guess I'm kind of okay with that. Now here's something I do have a problem with. Since they used a lot of parts from other figures, uh, they could have probably picked ones that fit together better. Her torso and legs are on that smaller build that we saw with like Kitty Pride or... I can't even remember who else, but anyway, it's a, it's a more slender build, a lot less curvaceous, if you want to word it that way. She doesn't quite have the hips or the bust that some of the other figures had, but the arms are from the figures that did have those busts. So, her arms look a little bit oversized for her body, both in bulk and just in, in size in general. Her arms are almost the same size as her legs, so it's not... I mean, not lengthwise, obviously, but thickness. It, she just doesn't have the right thickness. So it's kind of uh, kind of distracting. I, I always kind of pictured her, and I'm, as far as I can tell, she's always looked, you know, fairly sultry, kind of uh, curvaceous. Not that she's the most buxom character in the, in the world, but this looks a lot like a teenager. 
So I don't know. It's not really my cup of tea in terms of the sculpt. I feel like they could have done a whole lot better. But let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. Maybe that will save the figure. We have our hinge, which we've seen before, and the ball peg for the neck, which is just not good. The head sits funny on top of it. It's not quite as good as Angela, but it does look decent from the front, so that's a good thing. Uh, but it definitely sits too high, and you can look in there and see the ball peg, and it's just not great. But you do get good range out of it, so that's okay. The hair is really soft, so that's a good thing for the shoulders. They barely even fit on this body. That's so weird that they did that. Anyway, the shoulders have the standard hinge and swivel, so it works pretty well, I guess. That's okay. We have the hinge and bicep swivel in the elbow, so that's okay. Uh, this piece here doesn't want to rotate, but it does on this side, so I'm assuming they're supposed to. So you can move that around with the hands, which do have pegs and hinges for rotation and hinging. So that's good. Uh, diaphragm joint works pretty well. I like that. They've been a, doing a pretty good job with the diaphragm joints on the females, so I like that. Side to side, front to back, full rotation. That's pretty good. For the hips, they're still not great on this figure, but... They're, they're okay. You can bring them pretty far forward if you bring them out to the side a little bit, so that's okay. Going out to the side, it's pretty limited, but probably good enough, so again, that's okay. We have a thigh swivel, which is fine. The knee joint works just fine, so that's good. And then for the ankles, we have, we've seen this all before, but they go pretty far back. They don't go very far forward at all, and I can't get her foot to move for the ankle rocker, nor can I get that one to move, so no ankle rocker. I mean, I know it's there, but it doesn't work. So, yeah, this figure is definitely just thrown together to put out a Polaris figure. Definitely stands out as the weakest of the bunch. Out of this wave or the Guardians wave, uh, even maybe the last wave before that, this is pretty disappointing. So, I gotta say, I don't really recommend this figure, even though the character is one that we need in our collections. The figure is not. If you haven't been able to track these down or don't feel like it, Big Bed Toy Store should have the pre-order coming up soon. I know they said April, but I have a feeling they're going to show up sooner than that. So keep an eye on that. Follow me on Facebook. I'll, I'll post it when it goes up. Uh, that way you don't have to hunt them down. I'm waiting. I don't feel like hunting. Anyway, because these are I borrowed these. Anyway, that's it, guys. I don't really like this figure that much, and I don't think you will either. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you turn on notifications and come back for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting. <laughs>